Do you feel like loving God is such a daunting task, something that is difficult to do? Do you feel like you failed God in your quest to love Him, as if nothing you try to do measures up? In this video, I want to speak on how to love God effectively. When it comes to a horizontal love which you have for someone, it is one thing to say you love someone, and it's another thing for them to feel loved by you. Same thing with God. If you say you love God, you could mean what you say, but then does it appear to God that you do love Him? Because you need to know what loving God means in an effective way. It must be in line with his principles for it to be effective. So what are the ways to love God effectively? Scripture says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And that talks about loving God with everything inside of you. Loving God with everything, with your career choice, relationship choice, with anything that has to do with your life. The number one thing is to love God is to receive his love first. In this is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. So it's not about our love to God first. It's first about his love to us. If he cannot receive his love for us, we cannot love him with everything that has to do with us. We cannot love him with all our hearts, our soul, and our mind as scripture commands. God decided in himself to show us what is love because scripture says that God is love. So how can we ever know love unless we know him that is love? And if he does not show us what love looks like from his own perspective, how can we ever love him in a way that we will show to him that we love him? So you can't truly love God unless you receive his love. God commended his love to us while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The word commended in King James means introduce. So God, first of all, introduces love to us and make us see what love looks like. It is through the introduction of love, which is God showing us who he is, his nature, because he is love. That is how we come to know what love is. And that is the only way we can be able to love God effectively. Because we can never know how to love him effectively unless we know what love means and what love is according to his perspective, according to his principles. Because our emotions, we can't emote to him that we love him. We can't emote our feelings to him to make him know we love him. Our cries cannot be that. And when God loved us, it was not because we solicited for that love. It was God's own desire and will because God so loved the world. So he gave his son to die for us. Now, for us to be able to love him effectively, we have to receive his love first because it is not that we love him, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. That is real love. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers to you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Scripture makes this clear. By the time you find yourself loving the world, becoming friends with the world, operating by the world's principle, being led by the cultural rules, or allowing the culture to infect you, you are not operating in God's love. You're not loving God effectively. By the time you find yourself loving the world, it is because the love of the Father is not in you. It does not say the love for the Father. It doesn't mean you don't love God according to you. And I've already said that loving God is not according to you it's according to him what does he see as love because it's not about what you feel it's love towards him it's what he sees as love so for you to love him is to receive his love first that's the first thing to do to love god is to respond to the love that he has for you first by the time you respond to his love you have his love in your heart it will help you to be free from the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life point number two to love god is to obey him how do you ever know that you love god if you're living in disobedience to his will and to his word. God operates by principles. If you're not operating in his principle, how do you then say you love him? So loving God effectively is to live in obedience to him, to obey him. Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My father will love them and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. That is so clear. He said, if you do not love me, you will not obey me. There's no possible way that you can obey me if you don't love me. And the thing is very simple because if you love someone, there are things that you do that tends to make you obey this person, which is through compromise, compromising some of your desires and some of the things you'd like to do to make sure you meet up, to make this person happy. You meet up with what this person wants, to make them happy, to make them feel good. That's obedience in this human form. You cannot claim God's love and then be void of obedience to him. When his love is in you, his love will be the compelling factor in your life to make you obey him. This whole thing goes together because you cannot obey God without receiving his love first. Receiving his love inside of you will make you not love the world 
and it will bring you to a point of living in obedience to him to bring you to a place of being compelled not by force but through his love how do i put this you are compelled lovingly to walk and obey god in your daily life in everything you do in life either way christ's love controls us he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves that's so clear instead they will live for christ who died and was raised for them so by the time you receive god's love you'll be able to know this second point which is to live in obedience to him. And this is an effective way of loving God. Point number three, you love God through loving your neighbor. Jesus said, a new commandment I have given unto you, love your neighbor as I have loved you. If you don't love your neighbor, how can you then say you love God that you've not seen with your eyes? We have a culture where people give for appraisal. They give only in church and seldom give to another human being that is in dying need. We have a culture that we only give because we are doing that for some reputation. So if you are living like that and you claim to love God, that is just a facade that you're putting up. It is not in truth. And to God, for you to love God effectively, he says, love your neighbor. God said, love your neighbor as i have loved you because it's not just as you love yourself by the time you come to a place of receiving his love you'll be able to know that for me to even love myself is based on the love that i've received from god so now he's saying love your neighbor also from this compelling factor of my love for you if you are living on earth being so heavenly focused and of no earthly good what good is that and how can you portray that to mean that you love god john said dear friends since god loved us that much we surely ought to love each other no one has ever seen god but if we love each other god lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us that speaks of the effectiveness of loving god how effective are you loving god it is true loving your neighbor. Your neighbor is not the person that lives next door to you. Not the person that lives down the street to your house. But your neighbor is another human being. Because you are walking and wearing this flesh and blood, your neighbor is any other human. No matter the race, no matter the culture, no matter the religion. Because it's not about any of those things. It's about us being humanity. You can't just love with mere words. Let your love be followed through with actions. You can't just tell your neighbor, I love you and they are in need and you have what to give them, but you don't give. That is not love. Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Point four, you love God by living a life of worship to him. What is worship? Worship simply means to reference God, to revere God. It's not the 15 minutes or 30 minutes or 45 minutes. It's not based on the corporate meeting or gathering in church. It is about your life the fruit of your life how are you living are you living in reverence to god or are you just living your life as you want in your own principles that's not living a life of worship to god you can't love god that way you can't say i love god but i don't take this thing too far that's not the love of god if you love god your life has to follow through your life has to show that you do love him and how does your life show that it is through worship of him and the worship of him is to reverence him in every detail of your life because worship is not about the words of your lips it is about the fruit of your life what you do with your life the choices you make every day the kind of things that you do are they in line with his word god asked abraham to take isaac his beloved son to sacrifice on mount moriah because we read the story it could feel like it was easy for abraham to do that but when he lived it it was not easy and abraham obeyed god through that obedience god then said to abraham now i know that you love me and he said do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him for now i know that you fear and revere god you have not held back from me or be brushed giving me your son your only son this is the story of the gospel abraham portrayed god that he loved him even to the extent of giving his most precious thing so what is most precious to you that you would not want to give up to honor god or to revere god to reverence god in your life if you can't give that up it means that takes the center place in your heart this very thing i can't give this up i can't let go of this very one just take every other thing but don't take this one but then that's worship if i can lay every other thing down just to honor him to obey him in conclusion god sent his only son the one he loved his only begotten son to the world to die for us he gave up his only begotten son so that every one of us could live 
and be able to love him in response to that love which he has given us. So in this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. So you need to receive his love freely because he gave it freely. It's a gift. You don't need to deserve it. You just need to be open to receive it and accept that he died for you. He loved you. So if you can accept his love, that's a starting point for you to be able to love him effectively, not religiously. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and then subscribe to my channel. I am Uwem Akpan. It's my YouTube channel. I make Christian videos, seeing and viewing everything in life through the lens of the word of God. So make sure you drop your thoughts in the comment section. I'd like to hear from you. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.